Morning, Mick. Hi, Pete. How are you today? I'm pretty good, bro. I'm I want to play good. drums. Let's play drums. You want to play drums? You just want to get into it. And Make I'm music, talking. play drums time now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like your little program bass player. Go, go. Yeah, go. Shut up. It reminds me. Anyway, welcome to Make Music Go Time. Um, hey, how are you going, YouTube? Yeah. this is YouTube bit. This is YouTube bit. Um, free stuff coming up. So today we're talking about something that some people will love and some people will go, I hate that thing. Correct. What are we talking about, Pete? We're talking about metronome. <laughs> I, I quite clearly like metronomes. They're my friend. Well, we both actually uh, have a very passionate and long-term relationship with metronomes. Yep. Um, but I guess maybe part of today was a, there are a lot of people who find them kind of sterile and a bit boring, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's actually funny. So I had a student during the week, and he's got you know pretty good time. He plays along with tracks, and he's got great time. And I said, do you ever do work with metronomes? He's like, nah. I'm like, oh, is there any particular reason? He said, oh, well, no, I just, I just play along with tracks if I want to get good rhythm. And I was like, that's great. Yeah. But my idea was, but you're, you're kind of responding to someone else's time. So I thought one of the things I think metronomes are great for is that you have to create time yourself. You're not just responding to another instrument or a backing track or a you know, a track off YouTube or something. So anyway, the idea of using a metronome to create a stronger sense of internal time, whether you're a drummer or a bass player or a singer or anything, I think is super useful. Absolutely. And that's sort of what we talked about with this episode mm. is to try to give some examples of how you can use a metronome to make sure that your pulse is strong. Um, Cause one of the things that I found doing sessions early on was that I'd play a groove, you know, be playing with the track and then um, the, I'd listen to the playback and the click was on and it was very strong you know the pulse felt really strong but at one point the engineer muted the click and then the quarter note pulse sort of wasn't as evident and wasn't as strong because I wasn't carrying it in my own playing as as strongly as the metronome was doing so it was sort of doing that job and it can be an easy trap to get into where the click is always playing the downbeat, so then you're reliant on that, and it sounds like the pulse is really strong in the music, but in actual fact, it's the metronome that's responsible for that. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, so then you sort of realise, oh, it sounds great, click's gone, you're like... Oh. oh exactly. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. All right, so, yeah, so I thought we'd try out some, um, I don't know, I just call them metronome games. Um, yeah, it's great. Everyone, like, we know what a metronome is, you just try and play in time with it. Okay, so what we thought we'd do today, though, is a couple of things. main one we're going to look at today is not making the metronome do what you would normally do. So changing how you perceive the metronome. Because the most common thing is the metronome represents the pulse. So that's, there's a thing clicking at you, and you're trying to play eighth notes off that. So one and two and three and four and... So I guess today is largely about making the metronome anything other than the pulse. Yeah. So the metronome's going to end up playing some kind of accent or a rhythm or a, a polyrhythm at some times. So this is tricky territory if you haven't done standard metronome work before. But we're going to sort of ease on in and show you a few things. And then, you know, if it's really interesting later on, we're going to do some really nasty stuff. And really push ourselves yeah. and see what we can do. Um, so, without further ado, we should maybe just try playing some examples. Let's do that. Awesome. So, the first thing we'll try, consult the oracle on the wall that no one else can see. <laughs> um, all right. We're just going to, instead of putting the click on the downbeat, we're going to make the click do the, the upbeat eighth note or yeah. the end of every beat. So, instead of being one, two... Three, the click will be going one and two and three and four and. Maybe we should, do you want to play a little bit of the click on its own? Yeah. So they can hear it? Yeah. So the click on its own is what we've got is we've got a count in on all of these. So it'll be like one, two, one, two, three, four, click. And it's going to do a different thing. So, but let's have a listen to the click by itself and then we'll play a groove along with it and you can kind of hear what happens. So it sounds like this. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, 
four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Funky. Yeah. So that's the vibe. I mean, and again, you know, it, maybe that just sounded like the click moved and you, your brain instantly just made the click the downbeat. That's probably going to be the most common thing to happen. Yeah. Is your brain will just go, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to move to the thing I'm comfortable with. So what we've actually got is what we might do is we might bring in a slightly different click where we maintain the pulse for a little while because we've got that one where the click stays, the counting stays on the oh, pulse, yeah. Yeah. but the click comes in as a separate sound and then we remove the pulse. So this is gives you like a, a transitional period, I guess. Yeah, it's like a gateway drug to having a metronome <laughs> somewhere other than on the down bit. Yeah, it's like we're, it holds your hand for the first eight bars and then it promptly buggers off and abandons you yeah. and you're on your own swimming. It's um, like my real dad. Hey! No, not, not even. <laughs> um, Shall we just have a listen to that one for a sec? For shiz! Hey, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two. Three, two, three, four, four. Does it keep going? Five, yeah. It does. Eight, eight bars, six. This is exciting. Seven, seven and eight. eight. Keep the pulse and one, two, yeah. two. And if you stop clapping, correct. That's the trick. So, so that's kind of the idea. Is there's a couple of ways to do this. Is I found when I started doing this stuff is. Um, progressively easing myself into these things rather than just launching into them because, man, oh, man, they can be hard yeah. when you just start from nothing. But we shall try now. We're going to play like a little groove yep. that we've got. Um, and we're just going to play it with that click going and we're just going to do like a few cycles of it. And I'd have to remind myself of what my actual bass line is. Okay. Oh, yeah, that one. Cool. All right. Now, uh, we'll... I'll make some comments at the end. Okay, good. <laughs> you already know what Just you're going to say. There. Yeah, okay, Just all right. Flagging the fact that what I'm going to say is probably going on a tangent, so I won't do that. Let's just let's just play some notes and then tangent away, my friend. Tangent away. Let's do it. All right. that's just a little groovy groove upbeat eighth notes um i think that's probably a good one to start with i think it's the easiest one to get into absolutely um almost sounds like country anyway um so moving on well we try some, or, oh, wait, yeah, comments, here's, comments. Here's my comments <clears throat> by doing this it, it helps to strengthen your pulse because what you do makes the metronome feel good or feel horrible. So if we play loose to the metronome, like if we're slightly behind the downbeat, then the eighth note click is not going to be right in the middle anymore. It's not going to be one and two and three and four and like this. It'll be one, two, three, four. Like it'll go astray or be slightly out of place all the time. So a good thing to do is to think about the... Um, the metronome is being almost like a percussion player and how well you're playing and how strong your pulse is determines the pocket that the click is playing in, yeah. you know, whether it's exactly halfway between your quarter notes is based on how even your quarter notes are. So yeah, right. then right. we played really solid, right? So what I might do is mm. I, I'm going to deliberately play a bit rubbish. Yeah. So I'll move around so you can hear how the, eighth note in the click drifts yeah totally so you're you're because that's the thing you're creating the time exactly and that's the best bit about these kind of metronome exercises if you're playing the click on the beat you either land it or you don't yeah whereas with this one you're creating the pulse yeah and i like that you said that before about the click is acting like a percussion player like, yeah like a really good percussion player yeah that will never move um so great do that but maybe you just do that on your own yeah, okay. Because, I mean, that's the interesting thing you said is, as a drummer, that's super important. As a bass player, at the end of the day, right now, I'm 
playing with you. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. but yeah, why don't you just do that? All right. Loosey goosey on yeah. your only wony. So, all right. Just let it run. Let the click run, and I'll give you some examples of yeah. how I can be bad. Yay! Yeah, being bad yeah. on purpose. Yes. I don't know how you do this. All right. It's funny. Okay, so to start with, right? If I play on really as in time as possible, two, three. Every time I hit an eighth note, I land on a click, right? Mm. Now, if I play so that my time is floating more, my quarter notes aren't solid, it sounds like this. One, two, Dreadful. Oh my god, that's but, amazing. I'm, I'm but having like... for instance, yeah, well, here's, but here's the thing. If I play to the same degree of rubbish and we make that click be on the downbeat again, right, like this, two, uh, three, four, it's more forgiving. Okay, yeah. So I can play rubbish. This is I'm like, this is childhood you triggering. Can turn that off there. Oh God so, Almighty! But you know what I mean. The, yeah. the downbeat is so strong in the in the metronome, it's deceptive. Yeah. yeah. And as a drummer, you're reliant on that, and you go and you listen back to it, and you're like, oh, that sounds good." It's no, you sound bad, but the metronome <laughs> sounds good. It's doing all the heavy it's lifting. It's doing for you. the heavy lifting of the pulse, and that's. I mean, I'm labouring the point, but particularly for drums, Huge. that's where these metronome games are so invaluable because you can really tell if what you're doing is keeping that click consistent. Yeah. Do you know? That's wild. That's great. That was really good, man. Like, it's really quite so noticeable. Yeah. How different it felt. Yeah, because you, 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 really, you can really hear the shifting, my human shifting more mm. when the click isn't on the downbeat, right? Or yeah. am I just kidding no, myself? No, no, no. Like, I'm, yeah, clear as a bell. I'm, I'm just very impressed that you can play that badly on demand. That's actually my sound check groove. <laughs> Sometimes, sometimes when I'm doing a gig, and you know, just if I'm in a particularly hilarious mood, it's like do sound check, and I play my famous. It's great. Oh, it's so good. I can want to transcribe. I was it. just going to say, can we transcribe that? Yeah, let's Send do it for everyone in there. Like, and you've got to play it. That's the challenge. <laughs> is you've got to play that group with the same <laughs> level of. Perfect imperfection that Pete just did. That was incredible. That's a anyway. really great challenge. Can you play this badly but consistent? If you can link to that terrifying group Please. in the description. That'd be amazing. I want to hear someone do that ridiculousness. Okay. Awesome. Right. I digress. I love Let's it. Keep going. That was great. Okay, so should we moving on to the next click variation? Um, this one's a little bit trickier. Yeah. So we're gonna put the click on the last sixteenth. So the one E and R. Ah. So this is a good one. This is tricky. Yeah. Um, really great for, yeah, syncopation and working on that sort of groove. And, yeah, I really feel how much you have to place the pocket on this Absolutely. one. Absolutely. So we've got a bit of a groove. So a lot of these bass lines that I've sort of written for these examples, some of them incorporate the click as part of it. So, again, it becomes like an accent. Some of them just kind of completely bypass it so it's an independent thing. This one's a bit half-half. A little half-half. Nice, little yeah. halfies. Yeah, little half half. All right. Um, so we'll do this one. What we'll do? Eight bars, or yeah, eight bars. This little fella. Yeah, let's do it. And we'll and I'm we'll see. Right. I'm reading your. You're reading rhythms. my thing. What is my thing? I got to read my thing too. Guys, don't 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 And we'll finish on the. Dagger do ga. Dagger da ba. Lovely. All right, let's have a go at that one. Let us do such a thing. Yeah. Very nice. 
good one. I like that groove. Nice. That's groove, kind of a good groove. Yeah, I, I reckon we might play around with some of these later on. Yeah, absolutely. Like, see if we can write real music. Yeah. So just maybe play the click on its own one time. So yeah. That, they can hear that oh, in yeah. case because we didn't really do that before. Oh, yeah. So, should we do the guide? Yeah. All right. So, here's the, the guide version of this click. So, we'll retain the count in and the pulse for eight and then be left on your own with this yeah. upbeat 16th note. We'll just have a listen to the click. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Wow. One. <laughs> Alright. Daddy's leaving. Going out for some smokes. <laughs> that's the toughy. Correct. Unbelievable. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good one. That's really hard, but I love that one. Yeah, well it, it... And particularly for those sorts of fields, like the Africa thing, or, you know what I mean, like samba type yeah, fields. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's great because it's got its own vibe. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, I like that one. That one's right. pretty good. All What's right. What's next, Dr. What's Nick? Next? Apparently, oh, okay, so we're doing upbeat 16th notes, mm. um, or as I refer to them sometimes, off note 16th notes. So yeah. the one E and a, uh, one E and a. Uh. So... Yeah, this is another good one that's really good for super syncopation. Yeah. Really cool, because, yeah, you're just playing all in all the gaps, which is really interesting. Um, and I've got some kind of bass line that I wrote that is apparently in A. In nice. A. <laughs> uh, so, okay. That's a very guitar -y key of you, Nick. It is. I did intentionally try to do different keys um, yeah, good. in these. I like and it. I didn't always use a pentatonic scale. Anyway, that's the thing. We'll talk about that later. Should we have a listen to the guide? Yeah, this let's guy? do that. All right, so upbeat 16s. So again, this is eight bars. I mean, it's fairly sort of monotonous, but whatever. Yeah. We'll try and do some we'll funky do some, dance like, moves. Funky hand gestures. Let's go. All right, here we go. Upbeat 16th note. Sounds like a bit. And why, everybody. Some form of we should reach. definitely. So, yeah, theoretically, getting to varying degrees of difficulty. Um, the next on the rank is, oh, similar vibe, but with triplets. Yeah, cool. So the upbeat triplet upbeat or offbeat triplet, triplet or yeah. the, in and out, the in between, no, well, not really, every other triplet. Yeah, the every other. Yeah. yeah. Every other tri I don't know. That's the thing. So, it's Tri the middle triplet in the first lot. Yes. One triplet, and then the next triplet, it's the first and third. Two triplet. So ah. one triplet, two triplet, one triplet, two triplet. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Awesome. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, should we have a listen to... Blair? Isn't she lovely? Is that your reference? Oh! <laughs> Isn't she lovely, babe? <laughs> Let's go. All right. Um, should we should have a listen to the clicky click do its thing for a sec. Sure. It sounds a bit like this. Ooh, that's not the right camera. Two, ready, go, and. Good luck. 
work with that, kids. Like that one. Okay. Yeah, that was helpful and informative. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to play that groove. We'll do something different. We could. We're we doing. Oh, we could just play a shuffle. Oh, like without the, the middle triplet? No, like, but like there's a, there's a groove over that thing, but we'll do our. We've got a, some kind of thing written there. We're doing. Do, 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 do. Oh, I've got like. Da, 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 oh, da, yeah, yeah, cool. Da, da, oh, great. Da, da, da. All right. That vibe. Well, I'm going to play just. Drums. Play some drums. I'm going to play a beat. Phew. Okay. <laughs> the word beat is lame. That's why I said it. Beat on. In joke for me. Beat. Let's go. Hit. Right. I don't think we've got an unguided one. Oh, cool. Whatever. No, we don't. Well, that's what it was, kids. So, deal with it. Yeah. Do you want to just do that one once more just for the hell of it, or that one's fine? How did you feel? I was yeah, all right. It was fine. We did kind of do random things, and I did quote that, yeah. that song at the end, but I played it wrong. <laughs> Which song? That's right. That's what song you're talking about. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great. Yeah, moving on. Woohoo! Um, all right, so... That's just moving the click to different positions. Yep. Um, the next thing to try is something a wee little bit fancier. Yeah. So we're going to actually make the click um, like a polyrhythm of sorts. Yes. You can think of it like that. So the thing we're going to try now is instead of the click being the pulse, the click is going to be playing dotted eights. And again, we're going to be creating the groove. Yeah. So, if you're thinking 16th notes, the click's going to be doing one, two, three, four, one, uh, and, and, and three, e, four, one, uh, two, and three, e, one. one. That thing. Did that make sense? It did. Now, mm. if you've checked out our other videos, because I know you have, because you're such massive fans of ours, mm. which way is it? Where do you put links in the thing? It's here. See this? Where we're pointing, yeah. there's a link to our video on phrasing in 16th notes. Woohoo! And you can go and you can learn about phrasing 16th no, sig- notes in three. Yeah. And that's exactly what this click is. Yeah. Yeah. So go check that video out and you'll understand a bit more. But for okay. now, what he said. Yeah. So I wonder if it's worth checking a thing. Like, so. These are just like examples of them. And, you know, we're going to sort of go through these examples. But it's also worth talking about ways to set these up because, you know, we've got all these files which count your winning the pulse that you want to play at. And then the click goes off and does its job that we've programmed it to do. But if you're just sitting at home with a metronome, you don't have the ability to do this. Yeah. So maybe it's worth just giving a couple of ideas as to... To how to how get you into go this. about that? Yeah. Well, I could... Essentially, what I do... It's really high tech. Show me. Explain me. You want a metronome? I'll explain it, yeah. Just chuck it off the... You get your comedically large iPad. Woohoo! And you have a metronome on it, and it does this job. Oh, punishing. That's the job. That is the job of a metronome. To make you bleed. Right, so in the in the case of the last one, I don't know what tempo we're at, probably one nowhere near it. It was ninety seven. Thank you, Nick. That's my vague memory of a number. Is this the that, mi- was, that was triplets. That was the last one. Oh, were you right? playing that slow? Yeah. Okay, well let's let's use this as the offbeat eighth notes, which is gonna be your easiest one. So here's my metronome. Hopefully you can see that. It's got a big play button on it. And I do this. I go like this. 
Ready? I get the tempo. Okay. One, two, three, four. Count along with it. Two, three, three four. four. Then you press stop. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah. One, two, three, four. Wow, so high tech. Okay. Press the play button where you want the where metronome. The okay, that's One, two, three, four. So if I want it on the last 16th note, I'd go, you know, change the tempo. So the tempo's here. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a get my vibe going. One, two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But again, if I move, then I'm back on the click. That's cool. And then I failed. Interesting. I failed at life if I did that. So you can do it with any of them. That makes sense. You know, if you want to do your the upbeat 16th note, you know, you set it to an annoying rate like this. Mm. You've got you know, one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, two, three, four, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. That's cool. Okay. That's how I cope with that it. That makes sense. I don't know if that That's, helps. Yeah, there. It's pretty much just get this. This is a free app called Tempo. Yeah. And it's got a big button on it. Woohoo. Big. You it, can do it off your phone. It's anyway. even bigger when yeah, your look. iPad's the size the of a small car. The size of Texas. Car. Yeah. All right. Great. I like that. That's cool. So what are your... You got any tips, Nick? Well, getting the metronome to play dotted eights. Cool. How would you do that, Nick? Right, so the way I would do this one is what I need to... The way I want to think about this is... What I want the metronome to be doing is playing every third sixteenth note, which I believe is a dotted eight. Yes. So the way I do this, this is how I do it. I do a couple of steps will get me to be able to play this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the click going and I'm going to divide the click into threes because I want the click to be every third sixteenth note. Yeah. So without getting too convoluted, that's just triplets off the click. So I'm going to play the click. It's going to make a noise in a regular space. And then I'm going to play triplets off that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start accenting every fourth triplet. And I do say triplet, quote unquote, because they're actually eventually not going to be triplets. They yeah. need to be 16s. Correct. So this is just kind of a, a little trick that I'm playing on myself, really, to hear this. All right, click. And I'm going to play triplets off that click and just put in my note on the downbeat. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. And I'm going to move that note and play every fourth accent. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. Woohoo! Tight as. Yeah. So that's just a little sort of thing I go on a little tangent about. There's sometimes how I get into these things yeah. is I do a couple of steps. Do you want me to kick and snare it for you? Yeah, do you so, want to try the same sort of thing? Yeah. Alright. So I'm just gonna phrase on the click in three. One, two, three triplet, four triplet. Moving into groups of four. Yep. Three, four, one. So that's cool. So that's the idea of this one. Um, but again, we've got like a little kind of groove that we've set up to do this. And the, the cool thing we're going to do with this one is getting into this, just for two seconds, going to the, the mathy thing. Yeah. Right, so if we're doing dotted eights, um, that's going to be doing, the click will be going 
one e and r two e and a three e and a one. So the click will come back after three beats. Again, referring people to our previous video on phrasing in sixteenths. Up here, up here, up here. No, over there, over there, over there. All right, so we're going to play a groove that is in three four, and all that means is the click's going to be returning to the downbeat with our cycle. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to play a similar thing, but we'll do it in four four, which is a little bit more interesting, more challenging. Yeah, which is more trickier. Yeah, much the trickier trick trick. Cool. All right, so I'll cut it. I'll play the the click. So we're going to get yeah, the same yeah. count in one, two, one, two, three, four, and then you'll hear the dotted eights, but with the guide pulse for eight bars. So have a listen to this one. This is what we're working with. Sounds a wee bit like this. Hey, look behind Nick. Woohoo! Hi. It's a bar of 16th in 3 4. So that's now, what we're playing. Yeah. But what's the click doing? Well, mm. so what you're saying is that this one. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. And this one. Yeah. And this one. That one. They're every third 16th note. Yeah. Oh, look at that. You one did a thing. and R2, E and a 3, E and a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And you can see. Let's do it. It's much easier to hear when I just play like basic drums. Well, that's the amazing thing is yeah, the, the drums override the yeah. click. So it's worth mentioning that like yeah, if, when I'm doing this on my own, these are much harder. Yeah. Because the my my desire to put the click onto the pulse is strong. Absolutely. So As yeah, is mine when you know that's the whole that's our point. That's kind of why we're here today, isn't it, mate? Yeah. Talking about your stuff. All right. So should we do? the same idea but this time we're just going to play a 4-4 four, four groove yes so this is cool because the click doesn't resolve with my, um, our groove it continues carrying across yeah um, it will come back after <clears throat> three bars three bars four because of the something that we did on the Patreon last week yeah La whenever we, we the time. in our phrasing in 16th notes it's, yeah. it's a magic number magic number and if Very you good. don't know about the magic number then you didn't watch the last thing but that's the that's where your clicks go yeah yeah cool so yeah you can sort of see that it does the click doesn't hit at the beginning of bar 2 yep so there's bar 1 we're the fella. same size hi little fella and it doesn't hit the beginning of bar three. Yeah. So you're creating those ones all by your selfie self. But after three bars, hi, back. hi, little friend. And it's if it's back. not back, guess who made a mistake? Yeah, you. Not the click. That's correct. So all there right. it is in all its glory. There we go. Wow. So we're playing three that. Bars. I'm just going to stick my guitar in front of it so no one can read it. But well, just can, listen, listen. I can make it go like that. Don't listen with your eyes, people. Oh, okay. Oh, it's full screen oh, now. All right, all right. Which is even more annoying. Alright. But let's just uh let's just play the thing. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Sounds a little bit I like this one. Fancy. Play the dotted eights as accents in the groove groove. Oh. It's kind of cool. Okay. Oh. All right. Anyway, that is a whole bunch of crazy things you can do with a click. Um, so I think that's kind of all we had for today's little episode as far as the free content on YouTube goes. That is correct. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we're going to sign off and say see you later. Unless, of course, you click on the link in the description and join us on Patreon. Please do that because we need to eat food. Food, good. Make baselines go longer. I um, need more technology so I can be more annoying with things. Yeah. And... and, and touching buttons more screens and shots and things yeah. um cool so yeah anyway um on the other side behind the patreon we're going to do some extra stuff we're going to go even deeper with this stuff do some more crazy things um and also the other really cool thing we thought we'd pop in is if you're on the patreon you're also going to get access to we'll do like pdfs of all the grooves and baselines we did today um we'll even do up some like backing tracks yeah so you know if you're a drummer and you want to play with my awesome uh, ham hocked bass yes. lines Awesome bass lines. Or the other way around. If you're a bass player and you want to play with this absolute beast, then, yeah, you can grab that stuff too. But anyway, I think that's pretty good for today. I do too. And right. we'll see you later. Bye. All right, bye. Bye. See ya. So that's it for today's episode. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and click that notification bell so you know when we're on next. If you like the content today, we go deeper into it on our Patreon page. You can click the link in the description below and join the Patreon family. See you next time.